folks, welcome back to Combo Class. I'm your teacher, Demotro, and today I gotta teach you some crazy stuff about the type of number I like to call a hyper 11. Numbers composed of just the digit one. Technically, these are known as rep units these days for repeated unit, but they used to be known as mono digits. That got coined in the 60s, and I like the nickname hyper 11, so that's what I'm gonna call them today. We have seen these friends in some episodes before. They showed up in our palindromic numbers episode, because not only are they palindromic, but they multiply to make cool palindromes. Also, 11 itself is kind of the flip of what we were talking about in our nines episode, where things were one less than the base we were counting in, and this is one more than the base we're counting in. Plus, we're even going to stumble towards some of those Mersenne primes, the massive primes I mentioned in our episode about perfect numbers. Now, what we're really interested in here is which hyper 11s can be prime numbers. Like this hyper 11 with 19 digits is the first prime since 11 itself. Now, to see some patterns in which ones maybe could or couldn't be prime, let's take a peek at the factorizations of the first 10 hyper 11s. So here's our first 10 hyper 11s, or as we're sometimes gonna call them, R, and then the number of ones that make them up. That'll help when we describe really long ones. It's a convention for the word rep unit, but we can pretend that it stands for hyper 11. Now, if we look at the prime factorizations of these small hyper 11s, we can notice an interesting pattern. Look, two, the second one, is made of 11. And all of the further even ones have an 11 in there somewhere. They can divide the second one. R3 is made of 3 times 37. And all the future 3 even rep units have a 3 and a 37 somewhere in there. They can evenly divide the third rep unit. And this brings us to a magical rule. It turns out that if any number A is divisible by another number B, then hyper 11 number A will be divisible by hyper 11 number B. Like the fourth and eighth one are divisible by the second, the sixth one's divisible by the second or third, the tenth's divisible by the second or fifth. And this means that if we're hunting for hyper 11s that are prime numbers, we only have to look for ones where the amount of ones in them is a prime number. Those are the only possibilities because any composite amount of ones will divide at least one earlier one. All right, we were doing most of today's learning indoors because it's noisy out here today, but I can't light fires indoors. And I want to destroy the possibility of any hyper 11 primes that have a composite number of ones because they can't exist. After a lot of hunting through hyper 11s with a prime amount of ones in them and seeing which of those actually were prime themselves, mathematicians have so far discovered six. The 2nd, 19th, 23rd, 317th, 1031st, and 49,081st, which was just proven this year. So if I had made this video a year ago, there would only have been five discovered so far. There are other contenders of possible Hyper 11 primes that are currently being investigated, so hopefully we prove a seventh one before long. Now, although we've only discovered six numbers that we've proven are primes and hyper 11s in our base 10 system, we haven't hit a brick wall because we can now investigate generalized hyper 11s, numbers that are written as just a string of ones in different number bases. Now, if you want a refresher on what it means to count in another base, like base two is binary or anything up to our base 10 system, we did a little refresher on that in our last episode about power palindromic numbers, so check that out if you want a reminder. But basically the quick story is that's our ones place, that's our b's place instead of tens place, our b squared's place, and so on. So for a generalized hyper 11 where they're all ones, we're just adding one plus our base plus our base number squared and so on for however long our hyper 11 is. An example would be 31 of a thing, we would write like that in our base 10 system. But if we were writing in base two, binary, like for a computer, 
we would write that amount of things as 11111. A hyper 11, and in fact, a hyper 11 prime. So let's check out what numbers are hyper 11 primes in other bases. So here's some of the smallest hyper 11 primes in different bases, written as how many ones we'd write them in in that base. And we notice that the amount of ones in them are all prime numbers too, because that rule from earlier still holds, where if there's a composite number of ones in our hyper 11, it will divide some earlier hyper 11 that that composite number could divide. All right, since we can't have hyper 11 primes in any base with a composite number of ones, let's destroy that whole possibility. Now you may notice that most of them have a bunch of numbers and keep going. Whereas base four only has a single one, two ones, which is five in our system. And eight only has a single one, 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 which is the number 73 in our system. And base nine has no hyper 11 primes. These numbers are different because they're perfect powers, a square number, a cube, another square. And it turns out if your base is a perfect power, it factorizes too easily and there will be a maximum of one, sometimes zero hyper 11 primes in any base that's a perfect power. Now, if it's hard to visualize strings of ones in different bases, we can also generate the generalized hyper 11 numbers with this formula. All of the hyper 11s are a base number up to an exponent, which has to be a prime if we're hunting for prime possibilities, minus one over the base minus one. Like if we're talking about our base 10 system and we look at the second prime, well, 10 squared minus one over 10 minus one gives us 99 over nine, gives us 11, which does turn out to be a prime in that case. So this generalized hyper 11 formula is really what we're looking at. When is that? at prime. With so many numbers being a hyper 11 in some base or another, are there any numbers of things that would be written as a hyper 11 in more than one base? Well, we're going to get trivial doubles where any number can be written as 1, 1 in the base 1 less than the number. But what if we look for hyper 11s with at least three digits and numbers that can do that in more than one base? Well, 31 can do it. Uh, 31 things can be written as five ones in base two or three ones in base five. 8,191 things can be written as that in base two or that in base 90. But it's conjectured that those are the only two numbers in existence with that property that are hyper 11s of at least three digits in more than one base. It hasn't been proven, but very likely that apart from these two, which we'll also see later in a minute because the binary hyper 11s are extra important, there's probably no others in existence somehow. All right, zooming into base two, because binary hyper 11s are by far the most important. Let's look at the ones leading up to that 31 we saw a minute ago. Here's our base 10 versions, and here's how they look in binary. Now remember in this binary system, we have our ones place as usual, but our tens place is how many twos there are, the hundreds place is now how many two squareds there are, and so on. Like here's my ones place, this would be if I have a tens place, I get that if I have a hundreds place and so on. Now, if I get a hyper 11, I have one of each place. So the fifth hyper 11 in binary is like having one of each of these piles. Now, let's see something interesting that happens if I look at the individual piles versus the sum of all of them. Here I have one and it's one less than the next one. All together, those make up three. One less than the next one. All together, those make up seven. One less than the next one. And so on. The sum of all that's happened so far is always one less than the next one. 
And that makes sense numerically too. Because if we look at the third one, we have one, 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 which is one less than a reset to the next place in binary. One, oh, oh, oh. So of course, the sum of all of the powers of two that looks like a string of ones is one less than the next reset, a single but higher power of two. These numbers, which are the sum of all the powers of 2 up through a point, including the 0th power of 2, which is 1, and are also 1 less than the next power of 2, are known as Mersenne numbers. And they're super important in math. And they even show up surprising places, like there's this puzzle called the Tower of Hanoi. I don't know if you've ever seen it, but you move these disks from one peg to another, one disk at a time, where you can only put smaller ones on bigger ones, but you're trying to relocate the whole stack one bit at a time, it turns out that the amount of moves to solve that in the quickest way will always be a Mersenne number. So it shows up such cool places. Now, even more important than just the Mersenne numbers are the Mersenne primes, the ones of these that are also prime. Now, we've already met the rule that for any hyper 11 to be prime, it's only possible if the exponent is also a prime, which is the number of ones. So we can take these off our prime possibilities. And so far, we're off to a good start. The primes are all generating other primes. That won't always be the case. And in fact, we don't know if there's an infinite amount of Mersenne primes or not. So far, we've found 51. And for each of those 51, we also have a matching perfect number, a cool type of number we met a few episodes ago. Because every Mersenne prime is matched up with exactly one one even perfect number. All the perfect numbers we know so far are even. And so for the 51 we know of Mersenne primes, we have 51 matching perfect numbers. Hopefully before long, we'll discover a 52nd, which will give us one of each. So if we're hunting for Mersenne primes, their simplified form is two to some power minus one. And this is actually what that generalized rep unit equation would simplify out to if we put in two for the base. Now, this we've already learned could only possibly be prime if the exponent, which is the amount of ones, is also prime. But here's another crazy rule. It turns out if you were looking for a prime that was one less than any power of a number, like any x integer to a power of at least two, the only primes that can ever live one under that are for these cases of two to a prime power. No primes live right under three to a power of a two, three, four, etc. five to any power of at least two, or anything. The only cases where x to a y of at least two minus one could be prime is if it's two to the power of a prime minus one. All right, since it's impossible to find any primes one under a perfect power with its power at least two, apart from powers of two themselves, let's destroy that possibility as well. So these Mersenne numbers are a pretty fundamental type of prime, and they also have other ways in which they're easier to factorize, making them easier to check large numbers whether they are prime or not. And that's part of why the eight biggest prime numbers discovered by humanity are of this form. They're Mersenne primes. They look like a string of a ton of ones if written in binary. In fact, with all of the study going into Mersenne primes these days, it's highly likely that the next few biggest primes we'll uncover will also be of this form. So here's the smallest Mersenne primes, and then I skipped some up to the biggest one currently discovered. Two to the power of 80 something million minus one. And this form also tells us that if we wrote this number in binary, it would just be composed of that many ones.
So base 2 Hyper 11s are definitely the coolest, but there's even other crazy stuff that mathematicians have done with Hyper 11s, like if you plug a negative number into that generalized Hyper 11 equation from earlier, it's kind of like you're analyzing what Hyper 11s would be in a negative base of counting. And if you plug in negative 2 or analyze Hyper 11s in base negative 2, it's actually a type of prime called a Wagstaff prime that has a lot of research done into it. And now to symbolize all the future impossibilities we might discover about primes, I'm burning a question mark. <laughs> all right, I'm good with that. Oh, no, wait, not good. Oh, well, all right. All right. So these Hyper 11s have a lot of interesting stuff going on. Thanks for joining me on a little quest to investigate some of their properties. Hope you all have a Hyper 11-y day, and I'll see you next class.